So the beat goes on concerning debt ceiling negotiations between Biden and McCarthy. as They took pot shots at each other over the weekend, but apparently they are scheduled to take in this drive-in movie today in the White House at 5.30 p.m. Drive-in movie is a joke, kind of, but they are scheduled to meet, as Grady Trimble said. My great hope is Speaker McCarthy holds the line on the Republican plan to cut almost $5 trillion over 10 years using budget caps, plus work requirements, plus permitting reform. At a minimum, the GOP House has the only plan in town to raise the debt ceiling. It's the only game around, and it should be the baseline for all subsequent negotiations. Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer is suddenly quiet as a mouse. The Senate Republicans are back in McCarthy, and I think one of the key arguments for everybody here should be passing the plan will reduce inflation, keep interest rates lower than would otherwise be the case, and increase economic growth. Passing the McCarthy plan might, just might, spare us a recession with high inflation. Of course, in Hiroshima, Japan, at the G7, President Biden couldn't help himself and started taking pot shots at McCarthy. Here's another pot shot. Take a listen. It's time for Republicans to accept that there is no bipartisan deal to be made solely, solely on their partisan terms. They have to move as well. I don't even know what that means, because for two years plus, we haven't heard a bipartisan word out of Joe Biden. But then he launches into a tax policy rap with this non sequitur. Take a listen. And so there's a lot of things that they refuse to look at in terms of tax generation, as well as what kind of people we're going to increase taxes for. And like I said, we're now down to, we went from somewhere roughly 740 billionaires to a, uh, about 1,000 billionaires in America. They're paying an average tax rate of 8%. All right. First up, this 8% number, Biden constantly uses it. This is another one of these bottomless Pinocchios, just like his claim that he's cut $1.7 trillion from the budget deficit. The White House geniuses have calculated what unrealized capital gains revenues would come to if they were the law. But they are not the law. Only realized capital gains tax revenues can be counted. And by the way, Capital gains receipts have fallen significantly because of last year's bear market in stocks, largely a function of Bidenomics and his 33 percent approval rating. The CBO, the Joint Tax Committee and the IRS numbers all show that the wealthiest people in the country pay roughly 42 percent of total tax revenues. Forty two percent. No other group comes even close. And if Hunter Biden's tax returns were counted, well, then the wealthiest 1 percent would pay an even larger percentage, wouldn't they? And unlike President Biden, I am glad the United States is producing more and more billionaires. That's a sign of prosperity. They are great job creators. Now, on the better side, Speaker McCarthy over the weekend drew a red line in the sand over spending cuts. Listen to this. I do not think it's extreme that we simply say we should spend less than we spent this year. Right on. Good for Kevin McCarthy. And incidentally, while White House and Republican congressional staffers did meet today without any breakthroughs, the big issues are, in fact, which baseline to use, FY22 or FY23 or someplace in between. They're bickering over the speed limit for budget caps and whether to apply them for two years or 10 years. Former Senator Phil Graham writes in the Wall Street Journal today that FY24 discretionary spending adjusted for inflation is projected at $1.86 trillion. That is a 10 percent real increase from the pre-pandemic estimate. But get this, this is important. Non-defense outlays, domestic outlays, have risen 18.8 percent over that period. That's adjusted for inflation while defense outlays have actually dropped about one-fourth of one percent. Now, do Democrats really believe that nearly 20 percent growth in real domestic discretionary spending doesn't deserve to be slowed down? My goodness. Save America. Pass the bill. That is, it's the only bill.